Hi, this is uh, Javier Fernandez, and um, I'm here with a quick screencast review of the Stanford History Education Group's Reading Like a Historian uh, website. The um, Stanford History Education Group's Reading Like a Historian uh, site is, um, like it, uh, as the name suggests, um, uh, is a site dedicated to um, nurturing in students the capacity to read primary sources, um, analyze them, um, uh, and uh, incorporate them into arguments uh, constructively. Um, uh, <clears throat> the Stanford uh, Education History Group uh, is responsible for um, this uh, website. They're obviously uh, com uh, composed of um, Stanford University faculty, and as you can see here, that includes uh, as well as staff, grad students, and, and other scholars. Um, uh, <clears throat> the um, site is free. You can create an. You have to create an account in order to access the um, the resources uh, on the site. You can navigate through the site without creating an account. But in, if you want to use any of the resources in there, uh, in the site, it's um, you have to create an account. The accounts are free. They do ask for information, personal information, such as your name, your address, and your school affiliation, as well as an email address. Um, uh, so that's um, that's important to know. Um, it is um, the work of a number of people um, uh, in the um, in this organization, but perhaps the most noteworthy of them is Sam Weinberg, who has um, written uh, a um, you know a, a numerous uh, texts about uh, historical thinking and and um, reading like a historian. Um, uh, and uh, who I believe wrote one of the books we're going to be looking at in this um, in this class. Um, uh, and so it appears to be you know his brainchild and um, the you know he's he's primarily responsible for the site, but there is a number of other people who are listed as um, as authors of the material on the site. Um, uh, so uh, the you know what's we call it the history um, reading like a historian component of the um, Stanford History Education Group uh, website um, uh, is like I said a series of resources um, uh, that enable teachers to um, help to teach students how to read like historians uh, how to read through primary source material. There's a couple of different uh, kinds of things you can find in here. Um, uh, one is uh, intro materials. You can click here and um, access a number of um, introductory material that you can use with students to um, to introduce the, uh, the skills of uh, primary source analysis. Um, uh, there is, for example, this lunchroom fight, um, uh, a, uh, what do we call it, lesson plan that has students consider um, a um, the hypothetical uh, case of a lunchroom fight, um, and to ask themselves why a principal might receive conflicting um, accounts of the lunchroom fight, depending on um, the identity of the people um, uh, uh, who she interviews. Um, uh, a nice way to introduce students to um, why the same historical event might be um, viewed differently by different contemporary actors. Um, there are also the posters um, uh, that uh, allow f uh, f that that you can p um, hang on in your classroom, um, uh, like this uh, big poster uh, about sourcing, um, uh, for example. And you can see uh, it um, here um, with questions to ask um, uh, that you might post in your classroom and kind of refer to over and over again as you go uh, go through primary sources with your with your students. This is a um, a, a poster that encompasses all, uh, or maybe even a handout that encompasses all of the skills that are introduced in this section, um, uh, along with the questions that. Um, each uh, that students should ask in uh, in order to get at each of the different skills um, and strategies to analyze primary sources. So that's one big component of the um, of the website. Uh, but of course, the the meat of the website um, is the the lessons themselves. 
So if you click on U.S. History, there there is two big categories: U.S. History and World History lessons. Um, you click you can click on U.S. History, and you can and you'll find um, a huge uh, list of of lesson plans that are all related to primary source analysis in one way or another. Um, uh, there's this handy dandy. Um, tagging tool here. You can, uh, if you want to narrow down the list by time period, you can do that. So we can, you know, say uh, World War One in the 1920s, and you get all the lesson plans related to that. Um, uh, <clears throat> the typical lesson plan is something like this. This is the Chicago race ride of 1919. Um, uh, usually, it there's. Um, uh, actually, this is not a good example. <laughs> Let me come back to that one. Um, uh, usually, um, uh, there's uh, typically there's a question, a kind of central question um, uh, that the students should be introduced to, and then the primary source documents um, help them to answer, like this question here. And then there are the two, one or more, usually at least two or more documents that students um, can analyze. Uh, so for example, there's two ways to access these documents. One is the quick view here. And as you can see, there's documents by Woodrow Wilson. Um, uh, and these are usually pretty sh brief excerpts. And sometimes, or often actually, they are, and, and it's, it'll tell you if they are, modified so that the, um, to, to make it more readable. Uh, this is especially helpful if you have students who are struggling readers, but I'll show you in a second how to um, how to get the original documents if you have more advanced level readers. Um, uh, so anyway, usually there's something like this with maybe some vocabulary, and then several documents, kind of like a document-based question or DBQ, <clears throat> um, uh, like so, some vocabulary down here to help students make sense of the documents. This, of course, um, presumes that you have already helped uh, students, <coughs> excuse me, to um, have, have introduced the skills of historical analysis. And then at the very end, there are questions that you can, you know, choose how to deploy in your classroom. Either have students write out the answers to the questions um, uh, on a handout, or discuss them in, in small groups, or discuss them as a class, or some combination thereof. Um, uh, so anyway, there's, uh, there's that. You can also find the original documents um, here unedited so that either you can edit them to your liking or you can give them to students uh, wholesale. Although, you know, as you can see here, sometimes they are quite lengthy, so they usually require some kind of uh, editing. Um, uh, and if you click on this button here, you can download the Word document so that you can, um, you know, edit. Uh, edit the document um, any, any day now. That's assuming your Word, Microsoft Word is not um, is not being a jerk like mine is right now. Anyway, um, uh, but you know you can do download. I promise uh, Word documents and edit those. Um, uh, so anyway, those are the that, that, that that's in a nutshell the reading like a historian site. Um, uh, I've used it in the classroom um, uh, a number of times uh, as a way of introducing primary source documents. Um, it's a neat way to access collections of primary source documents that are ready-made for certain lessons that are organized around a central question um, and that in some and, you know if, if needed are also edited for readability. Um, <clears throat> this um, I think augments the usual collection of primary source documents that a teacher might have, say, um, in a you know a book, um, uh, an anthology. Um, uh, this I think is this <coughs> a very useful um, uh, addition to or substitution for those kinds of collections because of the way that these um, are presented along with a um, a, a central question. Um, uh, documents that usually are uh, present a historical event from multiple perspectives, um, and finally, and perhaps most importantly, if you um, are interested in differentiating and tailoring your instruction to your particular students, the um, actual text of the documents that you can edit. 
um, uh, that makes this you know superior to a book, for example, that you'd have to um, yeah make copies of, and and you could not edit. Uh, <clears throat> Obviously, this prepares students for life outside of school. This uh, helps, as a, a history teacher, do the important work of teaching students how to analyze information um, from varied, uh, various sources um, uh, using tools that come from the historical discipline, but that can be uh, are certainly transferable to everyday life, and their life as engaged citizens. Um, uh, so it does it does that well. Um, what it does not do well um, uh, is um, oops, I'm, I'm uh, lost my notes here. Um, uh, you know, it, this is not an exhaustive collection of documents. Um, uh, this is uh, this is good if you uh, this is good for uh, you know a handful of lessons throughout the throughout the year, um, maybe more. Um, but there's certainly um, for other top, there are certainly many topics that are missing, um, uh, so it's not exhaustive as as far as the historical topics that are that are covered. Although um, uh, it it certainly is a lot. Um, and then finally, as far as ethics, um, the personal implications. What sort of person will the use of this technology make of me or of my students? Um, uh, I think using this technology, using this site, often would uh, um, be a great way of teaching and developing the skills of historical analysis, documentary analysis, um, uh, both for, you know, primary sources, secondary texts, and, um, uh, you know, any kind of text that students are exposed to. This provides a set of transferable skills that will empower students uh, as adults to, um, you know, to, 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 to read, quote-unquote, um, the world around them. Um, uh, so it'll, in, you know, the, the, this is certainly an empowering, uh, if used correctly, if used consistently, an empowering tool for students um, uh, on their way to becoming engaged citizens. Um, uh, how will the uh, use of this technology affect how I relate to other people? Um, uh, and what is required of other people that I or my students might use uh, te this technology? I think that this allows you to relate to other people um, uh, in as much as Again, uh, kind of um, building on what, about, what I've just said, the, um, this allows students to relate to the larger world around them um, uh, to, uh, and to be able to, um, you know, analyze information uh, as they encounter it in, in various sources that, and as, as, as uh, constructed by um, uh, all kinds of different people um, with different agendas um, and different goals. Um, so, and then one other uh, last question upon what systems, technical or human, does my use of this technology depend? Are these systems just, etc.? Um, uh, this is a simple, this is a, a simple resource. All you need is access to the internet. Um, so, you know, uh, uh, internet um, access is certainly necessary. Um, uh, either through a phone or, uh, I mean, a, an internet-enabled phone or a desktop or laptop device or other internet-enabled uh, device, you can access this site. Like I said, it's free, um, uh, so it isn't closed, but only in as much as you have to create an account in order to access the, the actual documents themselves. Um, uh, the, the documents themselves are readily available in other sources, so it's not really closed in that regard. Um, uh, it merely takes what is publicly available, the pri these primary sources, and, um, and arranges them in such a way as to make them useful pedagogically. <clears throat> um, uh, and anyway, so uh, that said, I think that um, this is a very useful tool. I highly recommend it um, uh, to any history teacher. Um, uh, it is uh, packed with all kinds of cool stuff that can help your, make your students uh, better um, readers of primary and secondary sources. Thank you.